could be the one to be jolly, but I'm not too sure with the current news. However, we are a Burkamp Wonderland. We are an Arsenal podcast today. Uh, and we, and by we, I mean John and I, will be talking through the Brighton game. Say hello, John. Hello, John. Look at that. It was all, it was all happy and upbeat. And I know. We won, right? we, won, we won two games in a row. This one, not um, as exciting as the last one, but we still won. Most and I can't, I can't think of the last time I've done a podcast about us winning a game. That's how long it's um, been. I don't think me and you have done a win mm. since... Venga? Games? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Uh, quick shout out to everybody in the chat box. Uh, I'm not sure who was first in there. I think it was Stefan Selby. Uh, it, was it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was indeed. Yeah, there Stephen. we go. Uh, I was very late to the party as well, even though I'd set this all up. I then went to go to the toilet instead. Um, but yeah, let's go through. John, we'll quickly go through the lineups. Um, mm. Only one change from the win at Chelsea with Abamian coming in for the cassettes. What did you reckon to the change in formation there? Um, yeah, I, it's kind of what I expected. Uh, his hand would for, was forced with obviously Gabriel still can't be selected. I think he's got to miss one more game, isn't he? Um, and William and Louise were still sick, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know exactly how that works, but you know, maybe they were on the Brazil party as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, Lacazette probably could feel a little bit hard done by by not being picked for this game, but makes sense. There's a lot of games this time of the year. You have to rotate a little bit. I was perhaps a little surprised that one of Smith Rowe or Martinelli started. I thought Pepe might have come in um, for one of them or maybe Willock or someone else uh, just because of their age and the fact they've both just come back from um, from injury. So, yeah. Yeah, for me, the only change I would have thought of was Martinelli for Bamiang and keeping Lacazette in the side. Again, for yeah. similar reasons that Martinelli's yeah. played a lot of games since he's come back. Mm. Um, meanwhile, Brighton lined up with um, what a team without any strikers, and then four on the bench. So, <laughs> <laughs> as all Brighton fans, um, I know quite a few of them were very confused with Graham Potter and what he's doing there. Uh, but it kind of worked for that first half for them yeah. anyway. They completely suffocated us. Um, yeah, talk us through some of the moments from the first half as well, John, because I think. It wasn't great from an Arsenal perspective. No, it wasn't. And um, credit to Brighton, I thought, uh, you know, they had all the chances in that first half or half chances, I guess, with no one on the end to finish them was their big problem, as it has been all season. But for us, I just thought we looked a little bit leggy. The passing wasn't as quick as it was against Chelsea. Um, I thought Saka, Smith Rowe both looked a little bit tired from that game, obviously. Aubameyang still is... I'm not sure what kind of form he's in because he still looks a bit out of it. I I, I cut him some slack in this one because in the first half, we didn't really get him the ball. But Lacazette, as much as I am not his biggest fan, at least can play with his back to goal a little bit better and you can play off of him. Um, But it was was always going to be a different game because against Chelsea, you knew there was going to be spaces and we could open them up because they're going to push on to us and they're going to try and be, be progressive. Whereas Brighton, they didn't really press... They didn't quite sit off, but the defence didn't particularly get high up the pitch. The midfield kind of sat there. Um, Basuma was just picking up every loose ball or pass and 50-50 for them. Um, He's a player, by the way, I would definitely like us to look at possibly getting. Um, So, yeah, you know, Brighton, I thought, played pretty well in the first half, suffocated us. We just played too slow. Um, And it really was just a case of, I always thought this might be one of those games where you're going to have to be patient and wait. It might have been a case that the second half is more likely when you're going to get the goal just because they're, I know they're not having a great season, but they are pretty organized at the back and defensively as well. They're they're pretty solid. Um, And we just didn't get beyond the defense really enough at all. Uh, There was a lot of like running and movement from Martinelli and Aubameyang, but it just wasn't being picked out. Smith Rowe wasn't getting the ball enough. Saka was looked like the the one thing I take from the first half was, this is the first time since Saka's come into the team where I thought he looked a little bit lightweight and a bit tired because he has played so much. Smith Rowe, that at times looked like boys playing against men. 
just in terms of physicality and how easily he was getting muscle off the ball. And as much as I love Martinelli and his running, it's, it's amazing how much energy he can put in the game. But there was that also, uh, he is extremely raw still. And sometimes his decision making or his passing isn't always the best. And his like, technical game needs to be upped uh, quite a bit and just sort of tactically. Um, and I thought that's what Brighton did very well in the first half. And yeah, getting to half time, it was like, yeah, I'm not quite as confident in this. We, I, I felt we did the change at half time, although we didn't get one, um, just to mix things up a bit. Yeah, I think one thing, especially on the same side that Saka was on, you also had Bellerin, who both looked like they were struggling with, and looked like they were targeted, to be honest, with what Potter had done with Brighton. There wasn't a player shorter than six foot on the Brighton side of that pitch, so. Yeah. Of course, they were always going to knock long balls in over the top, and neither of them had that have the physicality to really deal with anybody like that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's where we really struggled with them. And as you say, kind of in the second half, it all kind of changed because Brighton kind of came out a little bit from there. They always were playing that high line, uh, at least from what commentators were saying that there was always that option over the top, but we weren't necessarily playing it. And yeah, I think that's where we'll kind of go into it for a bit more, that whatever Arteta said at half time, you could see that however inconsistent, you know, young kids are, if you do give them a bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of a rollicking or a little bit of feedback, they tend to take it on board and yeah. they looked completely different in the second half. Completely. Yeah, start. they they looked like much more energized. The passing was quicker. They were more adventurous with the passing as well. There was a lot of in the first half, sort of, okay, we're going sideways. We're playing the safe ball. We're not going to risk too much at the start. Um, which again struck me as a little bit odd because I just thought, well, it's not like Brighton have got bags of pace or anything like that, or any real goal threat on the pitch. Because like you said, all their strikers were on the bench. Um, but yeah, we were just a bit more adventurous in our passing and you just saw straight away from the, the kickoff of the second half, uh, like two or three chances within the first couple of minutes, just carved open. Lacazette, uh, sorry, not Lacazette, sorry, Aubameyang getting into the game or actually getting on the ball, turning balls out to Tierney or to Bellerin and then getting back in the box. Um, Saka actually running at his man, Smith Rowe getting on the ball a little bit more, or even when he wasn't getting on the ball, he was moving into space and dragging a player with him, noticeably Basuma was not in position as much in that second half because he was getting pulled about a lot more and having to do a lot more work than when we were a lot more static. Um, yeah, and then it just, obviously, it came down to the, what ended up looking like a genius substitution, but I think he's more about a 19-year-old kid yet again. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Saka found, he finally managed to catch Dan Byrne high up the field mm. and turn him. Um, you know, he's a big guy, Dan Byrne, as many, many commentators will tell you he is six foot seven, Dan Byrne. <laughs> uh, managed to finally turn him and, yeah, break down the wing. It was quite funny watching the kind of foot race because it was like every six steps Saka took, uh, <laughs> Byrne just took one and it was the same <laughs> length <laughs> stride just to get back to him. So he never looked like he was fully, uh, you know, pulling away from him. But yeah, a great cutback into Lacazette, who, what, first, yeah. second and third touch was just to set it, knock it out of his feet and then smash it into the corner. And it was, yeah, it looked superb from that point of view. And I think that was also, as you say, Brighton were getting a little bit more leggy in midfield mm -hmm. because there was that gap and that space that wasn't being either we weren't finding it between the centre-backs and the midfielders or it was just more apparent where Lacazette yeah. was when he put that in. But I think, yeah. That, there that be... finish as well from Lacazette, as, as much as I criticise him, and I have a lot this season, um, he seems to have found a bit of form again now, which is really helpful for us because obviously Aubameyang isn't doing so well. Um, but yeah, the first touch I was a little bit worried about. I thought, oh, that's a little bit heavy. But then he just sets it again. And it's a really, really clever finish. A really difficult one as well because he uses yeah. the defender to bend it round into that near post. And um, oh, I can't remember the name of the goalkeeper now. Uh, Sanchez. Sanchez, yeah, yeah, he had absolutely no chance to it. And to be and uh, you know, if you're a Brighton fan, you probably feel a bit sorry for him because not long before that, he'd made an absolutely brilliant save from uh, Abamyang uh, from yeah. another chance that Saka had created as well. 
Yeah, I did wonder on that one. Um, I thought it was a poor finish from Aubameyang. I think he should be scoring it, but then... Yeah, I do think that, but then Sanchez does everything he can to make the save. But yeah, you would think Aubameyang in like red-hot form like he was at the end of last season, he puts that away and doesn't give the keeper a chance to, to put anything on it. But the keeper made a good block. But again, it showed Saka again was a really good, strong outlet. Um, Martinelli, I think, coming off was fine. I didn't have an issue with that. Um, just like he, he will run all day for you, but the problem is he will run all day even when he knows his body's telling him not to. Uh, a little bit like uh, Alexis Sanchez or Luis Suarez, that whole South American thing, really, isn't it? Um, and there is that risk of recurring any sort of like uh, muscle strains and things like that because of the amount of time he was out of injury. So I think that was a decent substitution in the end. And obviously, it did work out because, like I said, came on and, and settled the nerves a bit. Um, to be, after that goal, it's weird because at that point you think, okay, Brighton's head's going to drop, and they did a little bit, and obviously we still had the ball. But generally, as the game goes on towards the end, I get nervy. But in this game, I I didn't feel nervous at all once we went 1-0 up. I thought we actually managed the game quite well, which is a big difference from, say, the Chelsea game where we're 3-0 up, and then at the end of it, I was absolutely bricking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one of the things that kind of highlighted it to me towards the end was when Bellerin's making that lone run on his own up the field and I'm just screaming at the TV go to the corner go to the corner because for a bit he looks like he's going there but yeah. Aubameyang you've seen from a chance that he's had before hasn't got the legs to get there in the 90th minute no. so there's no point trying to look for him at that no. point um, so yeah it was I think we did manage the game really well I think one thing that I was very impressed with generally. If you look in the detail, there's minor things. Is how well we dealt with them from set plays as yeah. well. You can moan about how Hector Bellerin is, you know, marking the tallest man on the field, but he's also not the most dangerous from a Brighton set play. Yeah, by any um, you know stretch of the imagination, they've got Webster who scored against us last season. Uh, I think he scored against us twice. And then Dunk, who scored in the, uh, should we call it the Mope Guendouzi Leno game? Oh, God, yeah. Let's yeah. not Dunk, remember that one. <laughs> exactly. Dunk scored the first goal in that one from a dodgy set play. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's one that we kind of need to look at in general that whilst we seem to always bemoan our defending of set plays, when you look at them after the game, you're like, well, we still haven't conceded from a corner this season that wasn't scored by one of our own players. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say yeah. he's, he's not remembering. Oh no, he did. Yeah. He oh no. That. Yeah, it's yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> it's there. The opposition still hasn't managed to, you know, get mm. through us from that thing. So the set piece coach we have got, you know, although it doesn't seem to necessarily teach our players to uh, mm. beat the first man, maybe they're struggling because we defend them so well. <laughs> yeah, I d the the thing with this the set piece coach like the set piece they are corners in particular were really bad i think there was one free kick that was decent that saka did take i i can't imagine the set piece coach is saying to them try as hard as you can to just miss like mm. barely miss the first defender because we'll definitely score from that because having watched the amount of times we've done it he's definitely not telling them that if <laughs> a professional footballer can't realize oh maybe I should hit it a little bit harder or a little bit higher. It might mm. get to our players. I think that's more on the players than it is on the set-piece coach. But our defending from set-pieces actually has been really good. And it's, well, I think we've been one of the best in the league um, up until recently. Obviously, it's only two games really where we've struggled with it a little bit um, against a side like Chelsea, who do score a lot of goals from set-pieces anyway. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say that I thought Holding and Marie today, again, are pairing your... Probably not. It's nowhere near our first choice pairing for centre backs. Um, and I think going forward, the club and whether it be January or summer or whatever, it's going to be Gabriel plus another. Whoever who, I don't know who the other one will be. Whether it's Saliba or someone else. Um, oh, well, sorry, Wolves nearly scored. Um, it's very weird because of where we are on the table. I'm not sure. Like, I don't want Man United to win because it's Man United, but also like I kind of want Wolves to lose because yeah, weird. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I thought they. I, they dealt with Brighton pretty well and they covered each other very well and they were talking a lot through the game. Um, and what I do like about Marie is that when he's got the ball, he is adventurous enough to go, okay, I don't 
always want to do the simple pass to that El Nenny or Xhaka who's three, four yards from me. Sometimes I am going to drive it forward. And that midfield partnership today, El Nenny and Xhaka, whilst they didn't play as well as the Chelsea game um, and they weren't quite as adventurous with their passing, I did think they covered the defence and the fullbacks really well and dropped into the correct positions a lot of the time. Um, and is perhaps because we're playing against a team that sits a little bit deeper is why you saw Xhaka picking the ball up a lot in that sort of almost like when we were playing that back three and he would fill in for the left-sided centre-back and get the ball there and try and spray passes around. So today was always going to be a totally different game to the Chelsea one. But as I said, the most important thing was getting three points. Arteta said it as much in his uh, uh, press conference after the game, um, talking to Kevin Campbell and uh, Annie Aluko, basically saying that, you know, if, if you're struggling, the best thing to get is wins. Um, it doesn't matter how you get them, it's just getting them. And you can see that at the end of the game, the way Maitland-Niles was like running over to Lacazette, was scoring the goal and celebrating with him. And it's just about building confidence. And if we have to take, say, some pragmatic wins against teams like Brighton and West Brom coming up and other clubs like that, I will take 1-0 sort of scrappy, not the best mm. games to watch. But if it gets us back up the table and then allows the players to start playing with a bit more self-belief, and confidence, then I, I don't have any issue with that. And I think you're probably going to see the trend of that this season generally, that the sort of more, the the bigger, so to speak, opponents we play, whether it's Liverpool or Leicester or, you know, United or something, teams that are going to come out a bit more, we are going to be much more expansive and more open with our play and a bit more exciting with our passing. Whereas against the lower down teams, because they will sit back a bit, it's going to be a bit slow and turgid and it might not be till things tick up a little bit until the second half. Yeah, and I thought, uh, going back to Pablo Mari as well, I think, if I'm right in saying, that's only the seventh appearance he's made for us at the club yeah. since he's come in. And I think whilst we say that we know he's not going to be first-choice centre-back for us, mm. it's going to be Gabriel who's in front of him. The thing that's really promising is the fact that he's only played seven games for us, odds and end games, and he's looked decent. Yeah. And that's what I, you I, personally I think... want from the squad player. Yeah, he, he's a, he's obviously a squad player. Um, I think the I think the other thing is a lot of people because he came in with at the same time as Cedric, and because of the way the signing was done and it was whilst Roll was at the club. I think they spoke about this on our blog actually as well. Um, that he's kind of lumped in with that transfer deal and looked on a little bit negatively when people haven't really seen him. Mm. To be honest, like I haven't seen enough to say what sort of centre back he is exactly. But I think he looks decent. And like you saw in the Chelsea game, he got tired towards the end. I thought today he managed it a lot better. And you know, playing two games that quickly in succession in the Premier League is a big step up from where he was. Mm. Um, so I think you just got to give him time and just say, look, he's probably going to be a squad centre-back. I think that's fine for our rotation. Um, I'm quite comfortable when he comes in at the moment. Uh, Cavani's just missed the sitter. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> shocker there. Um <laughs> So, yeah, I, I'm quite happy with that. And the, the other the other plus of that is that Holding, I think, has looked fairly comfortable regardless who he's played with. Mm. And at the moment, he seems to be the only centre-back who can stay fit or not get sent off. Um, so it's, it, gives us, it gives us some consistency at the back, at least. Yeah, and I like with Holding, I think this game suited him as well because Brighton weren't too intricate in their play. And a lot of their main threats were kind of aerial ones. So that's where we know Rob Holding kind of, he is very much like the blueprint of a typical English centre-back. Yeah. yeah. You know, but he is good with his feet. He's not great mm. though, but he's great aerially, loves a battle, like a physical battle with a player. So yeah. whilst he wasn't necessarily getting anything from um, Jack and Bash up front, I'm glad you said that name because I honestly, every time they said his name, I thought they said it differently. I was like, yeah, what the hell is that guy's name? And I uh, looked out, like, oh, he's from Iran. I've got no hope in saying that. It's so good yeah. daddy's not here today because, uh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I think it's because some reason, I think they were showing off and saying his first name as well, which is Alareza. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, yeah, it's Yak and Bash. And yeah. I, I can't he, even say, I can't say it a while properly yet. And we're supposed to no. say it. <laughs> Well, fortunately, we all know how to say Basuma, and I think he really showed kind of, you know, when players, I think, if we were <clears> higher <throat> up the table and we're doing better, they would say this was his audition for Arsenal. Yeah. Because he showed, and I think 
one thing that casual watchers of Brighton or non-existent watchers of Brighton have heard about Basuma, I would say it's very similar to Xhaka, but without the history, shall we say, the tainted legacy. He, he's he a bit looked, more precious. He, more, though, he did look, look a lot more mobile, to be fair, yeah. than Granite Xhaka did. Um, and just... And I, I would say the difference I saw between him and Jacker was that his passing may be not as expansive, but he actually sits and is a DM, whereas yeah. we've often tried to play Jacker as a DM and he's never been one. Um, so, yeah, I, I was talking to Neil um, from uh, who was on the podcast. Can't remember last time he was on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure people remember him. Chimp Guna on Twitter. Um, and we were discussing how nice it would be to see Basuma next to Thomas Party would be an yeah. interesting midfield combination um nice big tall athletic muscular strong uh yeah just lots of legs that that would be a a nice interesting partnership for um for me yeah him and sanderberg from uh sheffield united and that sorts our midfield three out because there's no way you're getting past them they're all massive yes very technical and it's exactly what we kind of need at the moment to upgrade in general um Right, where do we kind of go from here as well? In terms of player performances, um, man of the match was Saka from, not Sky, Amazon. Do you think yeah. that was the right choice? Um, I actually thought Basuma was probably, for the 90 minutes, the best player mm-hmm. on the pitch. Um, just in terms of what he did, and he just stuck to his job. Again, maybe not the most exciting player to watch, but I thought he was excellent. Um I don't think Saka was our best player. I thought it was... Hmm, I'm trying to... Honestly, it was probably Holding or Marie for me, although they didn't have a ton to do. I just thought they did their jobs very well because I thought the Saka... Second half, he was much better. He was excellent. Mm. But first half, I really didn't... I thought that was one of the worst games I've seen him play. Um, partly, again, looking slightly leggy and partly down to you know a lack of movement around him and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'd probably give it to one of them. I would have given it to Tierney maybe if it weren't for, there was one moment where he just completely lost his footing and got completely jumbled up and gave the ball away. Um, we should probably talk about just cause it's hilarious. Um, oh uh, yeah. If you do have any questions, pop them in the chat. And if you're watching on Twitch or what's the other one? Periscope. There we Periscope. Go. Yeah. And Facebook, we might be on there as well. I don't know. Danny knows. Not, not um, tonight. Oh, we're not on there tonight. Okay. Oh, cause Josh doesn't know how to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> I I was only when I was clicking through of which ones we can set it up. I could only set three up, so it was like a okay. it was like a roulette. And I was like, well, I think we need YouTube because yeah. you know, it's the one yeah. we go live on. Uh, uh, we'll go uh, Twitch, yeah. and then we'll go maybe Periscope, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, if you do have questions, feel free to pop them in, and we'll get to them. Um, yeah, I just I just <laughs> we had the Leno juggling the ball moment. Um, <laughs> Which is the weirdest, it's not the weirdest thing I've ever seen in a football game because I've seen plenty of weirder, but you know when you, like, when your dad's a bit drunk, um, apologies to anyone who doesn't have a dad, um, but <laughs> when your dad's a bit drunk and he's talking to you about when he used to play football and he goes to do some keepy uppies and he does mm. the first one, flicks it up, he's fine, and then puts it on his knee and then looks horribly awkward. Uh, <laughs> just... <laughs> it's just that that part just reminded me of that and then El Nenny as well just for completely forgetting how to play football for a moment and going I know what I do I'll give it to a Brighton player right on the edge of our box thankfully Brighton didn't have a striker on at that time um because oh. yeah I think for the chances they got in the first half had they had an actual striker on uh yeah we could have been haunted by someone like Danny Welbeck maybe but um yeah I thought overall the team did well a few couple of little scary moments but it was one of those very like calm, just manage the game. We got the goal. Again, manage the game. If the space opens up, we we can exploit it. If not, just keep the ball, run it into the corner flag, doing like sensible sort of normal football things, which we haven't done for a long time. Uh, and anyone that's looking in the chat box can just see I've posted Phil Macker's question to everybody. And that was because <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Uh, so... That's why we have normally have Danny doing this because no one can concentrate on doing more than one thing at a time, especially me. Uh, yeah, trying to copy those things and listening to John. Uh, you, don't, so, you, don't, you don't have to listen to me, Josh. It's fine. No that's one. That's all right. I I heard the Leno bit 
And then <laughs> suddenly I was panicking and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. It was basically like Leno when he had the ball. Um, as you say, it was just an odd, odd moment. And there was also, um, I think we could maybe talk about it. Well, I'm going to, so it's going to happen. Uh, Smith Rowe towards, I'm going to have to think of second half, uh, where Saka gets the foul. Um, where he's elbowed by Gross and Jacka takes free kick and it, it flies over. I think it is a foul in that moment, but it's the annoying thing where VAR is not inconsistent because you don't necessarily want it to look at everything because it just slows the game down. But I think if that happens in the box, it's a penalty. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, Smith Rowe is taken out by Veltman completely and yeah it's just lucky that we end up getting a free kick because someone else takes out Saka but it's just one of those things that I was just like so infuriating why why could we not how could you not see that as a free kick because I think it was in a better position yeah Um, but yeah I think that is kind of the game wrapped up mainly who have we got next West Brom uh, West Brom is next. We have where are we? Arsenal matches. We are away to West Brom on the second of January, and then home to yeah home to Newcastle. That's FA Cup. Um, yeah. So West Brom just got spanked five nil by Leeds. Yeah. What? Sorry. Sorry. What? <laughs> like this? This is a Sam Allardyce team, right? I'm so confused. They get a point against Liverpool. And I know it's Leeds and they play very exciting football, but my instant assumption before I saw the game was, well, Sam will sit sit there, sharp shop. Leeds will push, 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 push because it's Bielsa and they'll either get hit on the counter or done on a set piece and they concede five goals. Um, did you see the first one? That might I be did. Idea. Yeah, <laughs> I did see the first one, yeah. Um, I might get an idea that the Big Sam team was unlocked by Big Sam trying to play tippy-tappy football, playing yeah, out the back. Yeah. It was oh it was very strange. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was crazy. Um but there we go. We're gonna have to play West Brom and no doubt they'll shut up shop and it'll be exactly the same. And yeah, I, think I, was- I would imagine it's gonna be a, a not thrilling game to watch, but again, if we get three points, I couldn't care less. Yeah, and I think that takes us nicely onto the first question from David. Uh, how did you stay awake during the first half? Coffee, tea or Red Bull? Um, I stayed awake by my flatmate sneezing every two, three minutes. Um, <laughs> apparently he has got some allergy to God knows what all of a sudden out of nowhere. Um, we decided to do a bit of spring cleaning early on Boxing Day because we were that excited about Christmas. Um, oh. And something's got up his nose, apparently. So he has not stopped sneezing for like three days. So that kept me going. <laughs> wow. I, uh, I don't know what to say to that because it definitely wasn't as good as just somebody <laughs> sneezing constantly. Um, <laughs> mine was just hopeless optimism, I think. Um, but I was also watching from like two perspectives, watching it from the yeah. right perspective as well and seeing... Yeah, I was too busy watching Basuma and thinking, God, this team's going to go down when he gets sold because <laughs> they had nothing to offer. Um, quick fire one from formerly Noza. I suppose when there's only two of us, they're all quick fire. Um, Diego Costa, yay or nay, after the news that Atleti had said, fuck off. Nay. Yeah, it's a big nay for me. Keir Jarabchin, go away with your players. Leave us alone. Yeah, I'd agree. His legs have gone. Um and no thank you West Ham will probably pick him up um, I mean so, unless he wants to come in the dressing room and beat up some players that we want to leave the club that was um, that, I mean that could be worth it like a year's deal yeah we've got Rob Holding for that haven't we that's true yeah I don't, I don't know uh, it's just that accent it's not that intimidating I heard him say like a brick shit house so it's, <laughs> it's, it's not that scary no <laughs> oh Oh, wow. Um, what have we got here? Um, did Rudy Rastos ask a question? Was there a question in here? No. Um, it, was it was more a statement, yeah. Uh, so let's go to humble Hambo Gumble. Uh, could Abamyang be asked today? Um, what do you reckon, John? Because I've got a thought on it. Um, I thought first half he didn't really get a lot. And I actually thought his movement was quite good when you could see him on the screen. Um, but there wasn't a lot behind him going on. 
And then second half, I thought he was better again. Um, it might be the case that perhaps Aubameyang is better playing from the left than through the middle. Yeah, I thought, well, I thought the opposite. I think he'd be better in the middle, but he was doing a lot of interchanging with Martinelli. Mm. And when Martinelli wasn't on the wing, Aubameyang is so bad at link play that it just everything broke down. Mm. And I think that was the bigger problem of generally why we weren't playing as well. Um, because he was then asked to kind of, you know, players were expecting, I'm going to play out to the guy on the left. It's either going to be Martinelli or it's going to be Aubameyang. And they're two very different players. Yeah. You can see when Aubameyang tried to do a bit of link-up play, knock it past a man and get round him. He just didn't have that in his locker. Um, no. I, and I still think he's down on confidence as well. Still think yeah. he's lacking that. So he needs, he needs a couple of goals. Oh, fuck off to Haya. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, I think generally, I think for that game as well that you're watching, I've decided all games need to be a draw other than an Arsenal one because I can't work it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, I don't know, oh, I want Wolves to win, but it's probably better if they draw for us. Yeah, it's yeah, good. I think a draw works out well for for us, but I think any teams playing other than Liverpool who yeah. need to win to stop Spurs winning the league, that's a uh, Spurs are Liverpool. stopping themselves from winning the league. It's fine. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. Uh, questions from Phil Macker. I think everybody's seen this question. So, uh, <laughs> but any chance we ship out some dead wood in January or will we have to wait till the summer? Uh, uh, I don't think those will go. Um, who else is out of contracts in the summer? Mustafi, Socrates. It's those three, isn't it? I think. Are the three yeah. that are out of Yeah. And Matt Macy? Matt Macy, so maybe. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't lump Matt Macy in in with yeah. the Deadwood. Um, Mustafi is maybe. Socrates is probably not. the The only way you're going to get Mustafi or Socrates to go uh, to a club in January is if we subsidise the wages in some way before they sign their deal for the summer. So that that could be a possible. Um, as for other Deadwood, uh, Louise isn't going anywhere because I know people consider him. In that, um, who else you got? Callum Chambers maybe gets a loan. Again, I would, I think it, I would call it harsh to call him Deadwood, but yeah. with just the amount of defenders we've got, um, I'm not sure necessarily that he's going to uh, get picked or played that much. Um, and then there's the William Saliba thing, which I've got no idea. I, I assume he goes on loan somewhere because they tried so hard in the summer and cocked it up at the last minute. So I would assume he yeah. goes out one of our right side centre backs is going out on loan because we've got a yeah. million of them. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, mm. or who was was it Mustafi that was linked with Barcelona earlier in the week? Yeah. Mustafi was linked with Barca, yeah. Um, he, I mean, he does, he does know La Liga and he played under Nuno, and um, you know, he, he's he was decent in that league. Mm. Uh, he has won a World Cup, so and if you and he is pretty good. He's not bad with the ball at his feet. So the difference at Barcelona is majority of the games he shouldn't have to defend that much. So he sh yeah. he could be okay for them. Um, the only other one is Kalasinic, but again the problem is his wages. Yeah. So if a player if someone came in for him, we would maybe have to do some sort of uh, like wage subsidisation thing or like a payout or something to get rid of him. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I can't think of us. Uh, I think we might get some of them out in January if Arteta feels like they're detrimental to the dressing room vibe at that point. Uh, yeah, the, the issue the issue is not that the club don't want to get rid of them. It's trying to find somewhere for them to go, especially when a lot of them can just sign for a nice signing on fee for another club for, uh, in the summer and still get all their wages and you know stay fit. Um, uh, until that point, so it's more an issue of finding a club for them or someone who's willing to pay their money. Yeah, I think that's the that is the biggest problem. That was the problem we had in the summer as well. Yeah. No one really knew what yeah. COVID would do to their finances. Now everybody's you know they've dropped FFP and stuff like that. Mm. Well, everybody can go to town and uh, sign Mustafi for stupid wages for a five year deal at Barcelona. Hopefully, PSG they've got loads of money. They do stupid things. They've got a new manager, haven't they? Now, um, um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure we can convince them. Some of our players are all right. They, yeah, why not? It's only the French league. Yeah. 
There you go. Have Nicola Pepe. Uh, 82 million. There you go. Um, <laughs> sure. Why not? We're not, we're not allowed to lump Pepe in with the Deadwood yet. That's, that's not until the summer if he doesn't uh, do anything. Then we can. I oh, mean, dear. oh, well. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll move on from Nicolas Pepe. He didn't, he didn't no. make an appearance today, so we can't really slate him um, for not doing anything because he was literally asked to do nothing and he perfectly fulfilled that criteria. Um, question from Peter Tomlin. Is it just me or does Leno, every time he gets the ball, look urgent, run to the edge of the box and then nearly every time do nothing with it? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's true. I think that's partly down to his distribution. If he's throwing it, it's fine. But I think the fact was we weren't pushing that high up the pitch today. So his out ball options weren't great. And generally when he did get the ball, Brighton did actually have quite a few players in the box. So um, I think he was scared of losing it. Um, when he did try and go long, his passing wasn't the best. And it's something they do need to improve. And I understand why people will bring that up because when Emmy Martinez was there, he would get the ball and he'd punt it long to Aubameyang. But that was when Aubameyang was in amazing form or to Martinelli, who again was fully fit and raging and could apparently run the marathon every single game. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't lock, knock Glenno too much because, to, to be fair, the few saves he did have to make, one of them was really, really good. Actually. And I will mention that Len, uh, Martinez was shit in that last game uh, that we played at Brighton as that well. That's true. Uh, he was not very good. He was at fault for their goal. Mm. Anyway, um, good riddance. So that's there just particularly for Chris. Good riddance to Martinez. Um, question uh, from where have we got down in this? Oh, we, list? We, we did hum, Hambo Gumball already, didn't we? We have. So we're on Thunder Road. Okay. Please provide a comprehensive list of all of Arsenal's bogey teams. Um, oh, Jesus. Uh, I, think, I think the quickest way to do this is look <clears throat> at the league table and remove Spurs. That's about uh, it. <laughs> Everyone yeah, else. Basically, <laughs> probably remove them and Leeds. Uh, um, Burnley. Yeah, we could remove Burnley from that list and Fulham. Oh, yeah. Ful yeah. Fulham's no one's bogey team. No, they're, just they're, 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 they're their own bogey team. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you take out if you take out Fulham, uh, Leeds, and Spurs, uh, then yeah, the, the rest of them. And we're not going to talk about teams in Europe because that's, that's horrible memories. We haven't got enough time to go through yeah. every single one. Any, um, anyone beginning with the letter B, <laughs> <laughs> that'll do. In a in a potential one team league as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Question from Matt Roberts. Do you think the league can continue if more people at the clubs are getting COVID? So this is interesting as well, because the Everton Man City mm. game was called off because apparently too many Man City players had COVID. But then um, Southampton played, didn't they, today? Yeah. Earlier. Um it's it was very weird because there was there's been no clarification uh on how many players at city have got covid so that my issue with it is is that the directive from the league before the season started was that games will go ahead if players have covid uh as long as you can field 14 players including players from the under 21 squad so to think that city don't have enough players I can't imagine that unless their whole squad has got it or that the other players are at danger. Um, I think for the most part, the league will continue. There's still enough time in the season to rearrange games unless it starts happening with more regularity. Um, you'd have to get to the point where there's like 10 games or something that have been postponed. Then they might have to do the, you know, sort of stop start thing like they did previously with the league. So Yeah. Or just flip it. And if you're, if both squads have got so many players named out with COVID, mm. you just play all your COVID players and it's fine. If you can name <laughs> squad of people with COVID, then we get two sides with players with COVID in and it's then a playing level playing field again. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just got to find a ref with COVID to do it as well. <laughs> That's fine. I'm sure there's a few referees that players would gladly infect with COVID. <laughs> yeah. I would just leave them. Just so. John Moss wouldn't see through the winter if he ended up with COVID. Um, that's one for starters. Um, right, who else have we got 
Guna JBD. Do you think Arteta will bring back some of the overpaid Brazilians on Saturday? Right, Gabriel can't play. Uh, Willian should be okay, and David Luiz should be available as well. I think we, you. I think you might see Willian back. Um, again, not everyone's favourite player, but I just think it's a case of rotation because Reese Nelson has got some sort of mysterious injury. I think he even put on his Instagram like back soon. So he obviously has got something, whether it's a knock or whatever it is, that he can't be in the squad, um, which basically leaves Pepe's the only other sort of natural replacement uh, for one of the three behind the striker. Um, I guess you've got Willock as well. But yeah, you, you're going to have to... Look, Saka's played tons of games and needs a rest at some point. Even if he just only plays 20 minutes of the game, it's an improvement on what's happening at the moment. Martinelli and Smith Rowe have both come back from injuries, um, so they're not going to be able to play consistently like this. I, remember, I would imagine as well that Arteta would like to try and save some of the younger players for the FA Cup game for the Newcastle one. Um, so I think Willian maybe comes in for that. Yeah, uh, I think Willian is probably the most likely to come yeah. in. And then depends on Gabriel as well, how long mm -hmm. he's out for. Yeah. Because if he's not back for another couple of weeks, then... you could, Yeah, I guess you could see David Luiz in place of Pablo Marie maybe as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's the kind of rotation I'm kind of thinking that might yeah. happen for the FA Cup. Um, but who knows on that one. Uh, I've got one more question that I've got in um, from Data K LBC. Data K LBC. Um, which homegrown player can we bring in? Uh, I'm assuming this is for Ooh. January. Um, that is a good question. Uh, Buendia, I think, would count as homegrown. No, no he not very, Norwich? I think he's no. I thought he joined Norwich uh, a little bit later. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's pretend we know. Don't look at me typing on my keyboard, chat. It's fine. Um, he joined Norwich in oh 2018. Yeah, no, he would not count as homegrown. Um, that would would have been my first guess. Uh, in terms of the positions we need, uh, I really don't know. Um, Jack Grealish, we've got a spare 80 million sitting around <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, um, that is a difficult one um, because we are, that is the one thing we are a bit low on is homegrown players. Um, yeah. I think we're like pretty much on the cusp uh, realistically. So, oh, yeah, the, there's a few shouts in the chat box. Max Aarons would be one. Uh, Lamptey would count as homegrown, I believe. Yeah, Lamptey is English. Um, yeah. But um, under 21, so I think. So he wouldn't count as like our homegrown slot in yeah. 25 until next season. Yeah. Uh, Jack Wilshire, yes, Jack Wilshire would count. He's back at. Um, uh, where did I see? He's at Bournemouth training with him whilst he's out of contracts. Oh. Keep fit, apparently. So, um, wasn't allowed back at well, I don't say I say he wasn't allowed back at oh, I've got no idea. Maybe he didn't ask. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm sure they'd let him come back if he wanted to train. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't know, but he's something they do have to be concerned with. Um, mm. uh, because you've got to fill that quota, so I don't know where you're going to go. Uh, what's the, the kid at Celtic? He's French, though, isn't he? The striker. Uh, yeah, Edouard. Yeah, he's yeah. Edouard, someone like that. Uh, yeah. I think what we might need, off the top of my head, I'd need to have a look back through the things. So a lot of our players become homegrown next season. Mm -hmm. So and Ketia, Willock, off the top of my head, are the same age group, and I think mm -hmm. they then move over from being part of your nineteen to then homegrown. Yeah. So I think that will cover us from there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the you know, we registered Saliba would count as homegrown when he turns over twenty-one, which yeah. isn't for a couple of seasons. So, irrespective, um, yeah, he just goes in for free. But in, yeah, in terms of players we could buy, it's not the longest list in the world. Um, no, uh, I think yeah. our best option is, like Data says, uh, it's Kieran Gibbs as our replacement for uh, Kalasinic. I'd rather have Gibbs than Kalasinic. <laughs> 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 to yeah. be perfectly honest 
Um, yeah, so yeah, data says uh, Macy not out until the summer. Yeah, that would that would be uh, my what I would imagine, and also the fact he was on the bench the other day rather than Runnison. Uh, mm. I mean, that's because you know you got to put someone on there, and uh, the corner <laughs> flag was busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a nightmare. Anyway, um, I think that is all the questions. That was all the questions that I managed to pick out from there. Anyway, there was um, there was one other question because I know everyone loves transfer chat. Um, oh yeah, from Liam Greyhouse. Well, this is the last one. Um, who would you like uh, with January coming up? Who would you like to see come in or go? Go on, Josh. You can have your have your part. Uh, oh. see uh i'd like to see a new central midfielder come mm. in and i will take either basuma or berg from uh sheffield united i oh, another question is who will be cheaper i think berg would be cheaper uh basuma would be more expensive than everybody would think let's put it that way he's yeah. in that kind of zone that season after next he's going for big big money because mm -hmm. he's that kind of he's a good player um i think both of them make our kind of perfect thing I, i'm not behind the kind of talks of isco or um who's the leaky guy at barcelona whose name i will butcher it's puig but P oh, uh, it. puig i don't know you say puig, puig. Yeah. I'm going with Puig because I'm not going to have learned his name because I don't think he's going to join us. No. Um, he's got shades of Dennis Suarez about him. Yeah. Um, for me, in terms of players to leave, if we could get Mustafi and Socrates out, that'd be amazing. I suspect we'd only get one of them gone, more likely Mustafi than Socrates. And if we could shift Kalasanac as well, that'd be great. Um, even if we do have to like subsidise his wages at another club. In terms of incomings, I would happily take uh, Buendia after seeing more and more of him. I think he's a really exciting player. Um, Isco, I'm not against if it is just a loan until the end of the season. I don't think that's a bad shout. Um, Uwa, I have no idea what's happening there. Uh, I fear we might be priced out for him, although there apparently are talks ongoing. Um, but yeah, like someone in that mould, creative, another option rather than just relying on Smith Rowe or playing Lacazette as a 10 again. And uh, another option at centre mid, like Josh said, um, Basuma, I think, looked brilliant today. Um, I Admittedly, I've not seen that much of him, but there's a lot of talk about him and big clubs that are linked with him. So someone in that sort of mould to play next to um, to Thomas Partey when he's back, who, of course, will feel like a new signing once he's back from injury. Yeah, I thought that about Pablo Mari as well. When I saw him playing, I was like, oh, it's like a new signing. And you've got a competent centre-back. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. That, that, those would be my picks for, for January and then um, and then see what we can do in the summer with um, some very high-paid uh, high players off the wages. Perfect. Right. Uh, I think that covers the game. That covers most things. Uh, I don't know when we're doing another podcast in terms of stuff and things uh, because we have another game on the second. Who knows? Maybe we'll do one. Probably not tomorrow. Probably not New Year's Eve because everyone's doing New Year's Eve stuff. Will we do one on the first? Who knows? Probably I not doubt. because we're yeah. doing a game on the second. So probably no podcasts. There you go. That was That is basically how ABW is organized. Is we, It depends what someone says on the show. And if anyone from ABW watches the show, that then becomes gospel. Um, yeah. it, it never happens. Danny will make his decision and say who wants to do a podcast and it'll end up being whenever. But yeah, if we if there isn't one out, we will definitely be back for the... Uh, who are we playing? West Brom game. West Brom yeah. game, probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> I think we'll definitely be back. We'll probably be back. We'll, yeah. we'll definitely probably be back for that one because again... Yeah. I'm not exactly sure who's uh, <laughs> who's available for that one, or who has said yes and who hasn't said no. Um, um, oh, we're supposed to do the, the. Normally, there's a thing at the bottom of the screen that says about uh, a, a, a discount. If you, oh, oh God, what is it? Is it just Burkamp? Oh, on. Josh, Josh might have it. He might oh, have the. Oh, there we go. Look. Ooh, oh. look at that! Very exciting. Um, if right. you go to manscaped.com and use the code Burkamp, you get twenty percent off. 
uh, all the Manscaped products. We got sent some lovely Manscaped products. They're very good. I do approve. Um, I can also inform you, my lady friend approves. She thinks it's, it's wonderful um, that I am much more organized. I didn't know how to say it. Trimmed? Yeah, whatever in that area. Uh, you can also use them if you're a lady. Um, but there you go. Yeah. And you get underwear and cool bag and all that sort of stuff. It's very great. Um, um, it's good. I did use the uh, the bag yeah. uh, and shaver in yeah. a couple of days. It also works on your beard as well, not that you can really see um that i've done anything to it because it barely yeah. grows at the moment uh as you can see i'm also distracted now because i've managed to find all the clicking things so i think we'll leave yeah. it at this one i also <laughs> like that this is an example banner click on a banner to show it on screen i think that's, yeah, the that's, one with. that's a very good one um my lady friend is not called kevin uh phil <laughs> sorry um i could call her kevin for you though uh if you give us a thumbs up phil then I will call my lady friend Kevin next time I see her and see how upset she uh, she gets. A, th a thumbs up for a thumbs up. Let's put it that way. There we go. Exactly. Right <laughs> um, and on that graceful note, uh, you can also give us a like, um, give us a subscribe. What else can you do? You can click the yeah. bell. So when we go live, you'll know when we go live. But you can only do yeah. that on YouTube. You can't do that on other things. Uh, oh, if, you if, you're on, if you're on Twitch, you can click follow and you can get the alerts when we go live. And if you have Amazon Prime and you don't regularly watch Twitch, then what you can do is you can click the subscribe button on Twitch. It doesn't cost you any money. You get one free subscription every month to any channel of your choice. So if you don't watch anything else on Twitch, you can give it to us and Danny can buy some new bath sponges because he uses them a lot. I, I had nowhere to go with that one. Yeah. That's all right. He needs a bigger bath sponge from that picture that goes around Twitter every so often. Um, oh, yeah, we he needs bigger bath sponges. Uh, yeah. And on that disgusting note, um, yeah, I'll just say thank you, John, for joining. Um, thank you very much. Josh. Pleasure as always. It's been fantastic pleasure that we finally got together to actually do a podcast because I think we've not done the last two due to yeah. various events, either shit games or non-availability you can decide which games those were um but yeah we will be back for west brom probably maybe who knows but until then thank you and good night how do i turn this off <laughs>